In this episode, we leave Delos for a road trip across the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Hi. <laughs> we explore the amazing underground caverns known as cenotes. Oh, look at this view. Visit ancient Mayan ruins and get a private tour of a hacienda. A road trip. Um, we're going to the mainland and it's gonna be really cool, I think. Actually, it's kind of a funny story is we were sitting here at the dock. Uh, somebody pulled up on their boat from Cancun. Her name is Susan and while she was here, she's like, hey guys, cool. I know the area pretty well, uh, the interior of the Yucatan Peninsula, which is where we're going, like the Mayan ruins, cenotes, and all of this cool stuff. And so she said, hey, if you guys can take the ferry over to Cancun, I will pick you up in my car and take you on like an adventure. We're gonna stay the night somewhere. Yeah. And that's all I know. So it's actually gonna be pretty cool. I'm excited. So uh, it's everything. a lot though. It's like you have yeah. to have a sleeping tent, car seat, stroller, baby backpack to carry her in. I mean, it's really only things that makes our lives easier with her, but uh, yeah, it's a lot. Plus the cameras. Ah. But we're all good. So, let's do yeah. this, huh? Yeah. Let's go to Cancun and then go on a road trip. <laughs> it's the beginning of our leg voyage. Yeah, let's go. Here we go. Woo. That was a wet ride. Whoa, yeah. that was crazy. We made it! We made it! Thank you for picking us up, Susan! Yeah! Hi, Susan! <laughs> Say hi to everybody out there in Internet hi. Land. <laughs> so tell us about your story. Why? How did we meet? <laughs> Through YouTube! <laughs> Through YouTube! <laughs> yeah, I'm a YouTube fan of yours. Well, thank you so much for offering to take us. You're going to take us around and show us some amazing sights on I'm gonna, the you, Yucatan you, Peninsula you've, today. You've showed me the world. I want to show you a little bit of Peninsula. I say that's a pretty darn good trade. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you. Let's do this, thank huh? you for coming. So we were off on an adventure with our new friend Susan. First stop, her favorite Mayan ruins, a few hours drive to the west called Akbalam. The Maya were an incredibly advanced civilization, spanning present-day Mexico and much of Central America. Over the course of a thousand years, from about 900 BC to 900 AD, they created a network of cities and temples and are considered one of the six cradles of civilization of the ancient world. It's crazy impressive. Just built over a thousand years, huh? The Maya weren't really an empire at all in that they didn't have one king or ruler but more a people sharing a common culture spread across a vast area. Their cities were an interconnected network of kingdoms that each exerted influence over the surrounding population, which rivaled the European counterparts of the day. Each city was based around huge pyramid-shaped temples and palaces, where the godlike king, priest, and elite ruled. It's amazing how they built this so long ago and it's still standing and so many hurricanes come through here. I wonder how many hurricanes this have like weathered out. How many hurricanes do you think this has oh, withheld? So many. The fact that it's still standing in such good shape is pretty wild. Yeah. In fact, since recording began in the 1850s, there have been over 56 direct hits by hurricanes and tropical storms on the Yucatan Peninsula. 
If you extrapolate this data back before recorded history, the number would be well over 400 major storms that have pummeled these structures. It was built with love back in the day. Deaths, or lots of death. <laughs> Actually, not so much love, but a mixed system of serfdom and slavery. Slavery did exist in the Mayan society and were used for manual labor, but it's believed that there just weren't enough slaves to pull off construction of this scale. So all the lower classes would have been involved in service of the god king and noble classes. The Maya were able to do some amazing things for their day, and having permanent settlements allowed the development of artisans, farmers, mathematicians, and engineers, giving them an edge over more nomadic populations of the day. They developed their own language and writing system, mathematics, calendar, and had a good understanding of the cycles of the earth and nature around them. I made it, with a lot of breath. It's pretty tall up, look at this view, it's amazing. Come on, Kaza. Okay, I'm gonna brave it as well. I'm quite afraid of heights. Fun fact, I have never been up the mast on Delos. <laughs> I'm actually really afraid of heights, so I'm kind of like not looking down right now. I don't like heights, Brian! <laughs> okay. Don't look down, don't look down. Geez, the nugget's loud even up here. What do you think about that? Wow. The view was worth it. Super, super beautiful from up here. And it's so cool that you can see all the ruins and amazing. Now I have to walk down again. <laughs> okay, and look at these. Amazing, what? Look at this. Temples like this were built to solidify rule and honor the gods, in which human sacrifice was viewed as the ultimate nourishment of the gods. The sacrifice could include torture, decapitation, and in some cases, even the extraction of a live human heart was considered to be the supreme religious expression among the ancient Maya. The most likely candidates for sacrifice were captured enemy soldiers, with the most prize offering being that of an enemy king. The Mayan sporting events were pretty brutal as well. This game is known as Pactatoc. It used a hard rubber ball weighing around four pounds. The opposing teams played for honor, the gods, and sometimes their lives, with the elite religious and ruling class cheering them on from raised viewing platforms. The players were literally playing for their lives, as the ball was capable of causing severe injuries and even death in some cases, especially for the losing team, which could be ritualistically sacrificed. Although the specific rules were unknown, it's generally accepted that sending the ball through hoops raised high above the floor was one way to score. Handling of the ball by hands and feet was apparently not allowed, leaving elbows, knees, and shoulders to handle the ball. Accounts also suggest that the ball was sometimes replaced by the severed head of enemy captives, or a member of the losing team. Archaeological findings suggest that the fall of the Maya began well before the Europeans landed, and there are many theories why, including drought, war between cities, and shortages of food and natural resources. Cities were being abandoned and populations were already migrating by the time the Spaniards arrived in the early 16th century. The first encounter occurred with a shipwreck off the coast of the Yucatan. The survivors were seized by a Maya king, and although most were sacrificed, two managed to escape with their lives and stories, which was the beginning of a series of battles and occupation from the New World. Imagine seeing it in its like heyday, like when they were all painted and when it was like filled with people. 
Sometimes I wish I could just snap my fingers and like see it <laughs> in those days. Even with the civilization in a weakened and declining state, it still took nearly 200 years for the last independent Maya city to surrender to the Spanish. Today, the ancestors and bloodline of the Maya still live on throughout Central America and Mexico, and it's estimated a total population of around 6 million still live on today. It's an amazing history, and you can really notice too that people are very proud of it, which is awesome. After exploration of the Mayan ruins, it was time to cool off. So we jumped back in Susan's ride and headed off to explore our first cenote. Is it here? It's in the <laughs> oh, wow. Is our first cenote experience. Mm. Wow. Do you have any fun facts about cenotes? I heard that they were created from uh, giant rocks from outer space making holes in the earth. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but... Brian fact! <laughs> Maybe. That is a definite Brian fact, meaning I pretty much just made it up on the spot. I heard, I don't know if it's actually true, but that this is one of the bigger cenotes that they have here in this region. And uh, we're gonna swim in it. But there's so much pee in there. Cenote is a Spanish word specific to the Yucatan that literally means natural pit or sinkhole. And this area is littered with them. You guys gonna full send it or what? Yeah, you ready? This is pretty cool. In fact, it's estimated that there are more than 6,000 of these just around here. <laughs> The Yucatan Peninsula is riddled with thousands of slow-moving underground rivers. These subsurface rivers dissolve and corrode the rock above. When it can no longer support its own weight, it collapses and forms a cenote. Most of them are small and hidden underground, but a few gems like this are exposed to the sunlight and served as a water source for the Maya and great places to swim and cool off for travelers like us. All refreshed, we continued our road trip towards our next stop, Islam, to explore the site of a beautiful monastery that was actually built on top of the Mayan pyramid. So it says this used to be a convent and it was founded in 1549 by the Franciscan friars. It's pretty cool. It's pretty old, huh? So this is actually the base of a pyramid. So they used all the stones and everything. So we walked up kind of the pyramid and this is the first level. So they used all that stones and all the materials so to build the, this. They built the monastery yeah. on top of an old Mayan pyramid. pyramid. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. And that Susan said crazy. that they did that with a lot of the places. You know, they yeah. used the Mayan pyramids to turn them into churches. And Unfortunately, this was actually a common tactic used by the Spaniards. They would build their religious buildings on top of Mayan temples showing their dominance to the people they conquered. This <laughs> going nuts. We've just entered a hacienda. The Hacienda de Temonzon. It's a really this is colorful neighborhood. This is one of the wealthiest haciendas of. It was one of the wealthiest in the peninsula. So I'm gonna drop you off here. Okay. The restaurant is right up up there, and I'm gonna go park. Okay. Sounds good. Brian's putting on his nice shirt. I felt compelled. <laughs> I'm gonna go in there like a single or a life beater or something. Let's do nice. this. This is beautiful. Hacienda means estate. And in this area of the Yucatan, an estate with an incredible amount of surrounding land. Haciendas could be plantations, mines, factories, or a combination all at the same time. And we're about to enter Hacienda Tamazon. So we've arrived at this plantation here, and it was built in the 17th century. And uh, since they're sort of running it as a restaurant and like a hotel and uh, it's just a really kind of amazing place to be able to come for lunch and to see the grounds. So, so I heard the food's pretty good too. Yeah. 
This hacienda was started in 1665 by Diego de Mendoza, a direct descendant of a Spanish conquistador. Over its life, it was a livestock and maize farm, a Cecil plantation, and now a high-class resort and restaurant. That's like the best looking ceviche we've had so far. Wow, wow. That looks this, amazing. I've been on a ceviche kick this trip. And, uh, wow. 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 That's good. Just because Holy. Of the ketchup now. I give up. Really that good. is really, really good. Oh. I've just been wow and wow and over here. Wow. 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 Hacienda Timazon was originally built to farm maize and livestock, but during the second half of the 19th century, it was converted into a Cecil plantation. Cecil is a tough fiber extracted from agave Cecilana and used to create Cecil hemp, which is then turned into ropes very well suited to agriculture and marine uses due to its strength, durability, and resistance to saltwater deterioration. In its heyday, this hacienda had 6,642 hectares of land and up to 640 workers. It had state-of-the-art industrial machinery that made it a real powerhouse back in the day. The invention of nylon and other synthetic fibers after World War I made the use of Cecil obsolete. And now, after a thorough restoration, it's a high-class resort and restaurant catering to some pretty rich and influential people. Getting a pretty cool tour, actually. Yeah, I know. He's leading us to the cenote that's on the property right now. What an amazing place, huh? I know. I tell you what, like it'd be cool to come back here for a week and just chill and explore all the grounds, right? So much to see, and there's no way you can know about it unless you have a local guide like Susan. I know, how incredible, right? Susan. She stayed here a few times. Yeah. yeah. It's just so hard when you come in, even when we're here for longer times, you know, you have to do so much research to find these like golden gems, you know? Yeah. You ready for this? Oh, here we go. And so she, what did she say? The cenotes were the gates to hell? I think she said. In, uh, Oh jeez, I hit my back. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still Did you see that? <laughs> oh my god. Wow, I'm wet. Sorry, so when the hurricanes came through, the water went all the way up to like that. Up level to there, right and still, almost a year later, it's still not to its level because it has to get down to that step. Wow. That would be its normal. It's and normal. the water was always fresh and pure, it never got more salty. No, I'm It was not just not a lot of rainfall on the peninsula. Exactly. Wow. Just wanted to pause the video for a second to give a huge shout out to all our amazing patrons out there. You guys are really the ones that make all of this possible and there wouldn't be any videos without you guys. So if you enjoy the videos and would like to help support our project and keep the videos coming, please go ahead and check out patreon.com forward slash svdelo so you can see like all the gear and all the perks and everything else you get when you join our inner tribe. Awesome. Thanks so much and sending it all much love. <laughs> Back to the video. Bye. Bye. Whoosh. Hey, I thought it was going to be hot. No, no. It's not. so hot out. I like 
how we end up in these kind of places and I have no idea. Like we end up here and get a full tour of the place and it's just no expectations and I love it. Yeah, that's the best. But we have quite a ride home. So it's about the four hour uh, car ride, four and a half. And then we're gonna have to take a boat and then a taxi. Oh boy, it's so, gonna be a long day. Yeah, we're gonna come home late. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. amazing. Thank you. Oh, take care. You too. Thank you, Susan. Thank it was you. really a pleasure. Thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. Next Friday, some boat projects emerge and Taylor gets a crash course. I've been joking with Brian about how fun it is to sail a boat that's not yours. <laughs> Either you go swimming under the boat. Oh, no. <laughs> Taking oh, one for the team. No. And we go in search of an underwater park. People say, like, if you're coming here, you gotta do it. All right, so what do you see? You see a car right here? Yeah, it's a car right below the Okay, great. Let's tie up to that movie then. Swim this way. Hi, Hi Nuts. Are you filming on your nugget cam? Are you a vlogger? I'm actually not sure where we are, honestly. I'm a little confused. Tell me what to do with my hands. <laughs> laser, laser, laser. Hey, um, narration. So the first one, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> okay. And perform ritualistic. Bleh. The sacrifice could include the sacrifice. Bleh. If you extrap. Bleh.